Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you know what today is? Well, it's Sunday, so we're either doing... No, we're not doing that, so that means we're doing... Sacrilegious Book Club! Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, what do we have in store for us today? Well, we are still forever in the middle of a treasury of Jewish folklore... Stories, traditions, legends, humor, wisdom, and folk songs of the Jewish people, edited by Nathan Ozubel. Okay. And uh, part one was Jewish salt. Part two was heroes. We are in the middle of part three, the human comedy. And chapter one was droll characters in which we learned about schnorrs and beggars and wags and wits and fools and simpletons and schlemels and schlemazels. <laughs> And ignoramuses and pretenders. Right, right. And now we are in chapter two, where we're going to learn about rogues and sinners and tricksters and rogues and and like. Oh no, that was last week. Oh, that was so last that's not. Time. Yeah, that's we're not still what we're in chapter two, but we learned about rogues and sinners and tricksters and rogues. Okay, okay, got it. We're still in chapter two, but today we're going to do liars and braggarts and misers and stingy men and sinners. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go do it. Oh my. Okie dokie. Okay, we are over halfway through this book a little bit. Right. And we're on page 374. Okay. And we're going to learn about liars and braggarts. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to read this brief little intro. Okay. In rabbinical lore, there were four classes of evildoers who would be denied the joys of the world to come. Okay. Okay. Yep. So you can't do these things or you're not getting in. Got it. Okay. Yeah. They were the hypocrites, talebearers, scoffers, and liars. Wow. Trump is definitely not going to fucking heaven. But you know what's not on that list and should be? What's that? Rapists, pedophiles, kitten killers. Well, yeah. <laughs> definitely. But but why, why isn't... That I, listed in Meeple Doers. I don't know. I mean, I'd need more context, honestly. Right. right. So. Hmm. They were, oh yeah. However, the Jewish folk attitude toward liars, as reflected in its tales and sayings, was a great deal more tolerant. The liar, who is deceitful because of corrupt aims, is of course considered a rogue. Mm. So if you're like a mean liar, you're yeah. a rogue, Got and that's it. not good, and they don't like that. Right. Yet there are liars, and also braggarts, who are recognized as being quite harmless, who tell untruths or exaggerate, not out of malice and evil intention, but out of sheer perverseness and imaginativeness, or because of some childish compulsion. Okay. About right. such liars and braggarts, Humorous Jewish lore makes merry. A liar should have good memory, it advises good-naturedly. That's fair. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's liars and then there's liars! Right. Right? Right. Yeah. So, you want to be part of the first group, not the second group. Right. Definitely okay. not that second group. Yeah. Because it hurt my ears, mostly. Well, <laughs> I was trying to be emphatic. Right. All right. So the first little story that we're going to read is called veracity. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the word veracity means? Um, uh, I think I do, but I don't want to, you know, not know and then be wrong. So, so instead you're hedging your bets and saying probably not. Right. I, I feel like it means like vitality. Like, nope. Um, uh, wrong. Tenacity. Nope. Wrong. No. Okay, I'm all, I, was, I, I, I fucked it up. You did. It yeah. means truthfulness or honesty. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Like the I veracity failed. of your claim. I, oh, yeah. See, I have heard that before. I just. You couldn't put it in I context. Need, if it was in context, I would have known what it was. Okay. But I would have needed it Just in out of the blue. Out of the well, blue, Well, the yeah. fact that we're talking about liars didn't put that in context. It should have, but you know, <laughs> I, it didn't. So. 
So veracity, yeah. truthfulness, uh-huh. honesty. Right. A poor Jewish farmer called on his more affluent neighbor to borrow his donkey. I'm sorry, neighbor, said the well-to-do farmer, but my donkey is over in the pasture now. At that very moment, the hee-haw of a donkey was heard coming from the stable. (laughs) What a foolish excuse to give me, said the poor farmer angrily. Why, your donkey has just brayed in its stall. The well-to-do farmer became offended. Oh, whom would you rather believe, he asked with dignity, the braying donkey or me? (laughs) (laughs) And that, to me, sums up the entirety of the Republican Party. Right, yeah. (laughs) They're like lying straight to your face and saying, why would you call me a liar? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So next, um, we're going to read The Birds That Turn to Stone. And I, I made sure that I wrote myself a note that I want to read the note about this story. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So The Birds That Turn to Stone is from Legends of Palestine. And I wanted to make sure that I stated that because of what's happening right now in um, the Palestinian and Israeli conflict. And right. I, I thought it was important to say, let's read a Palestinian story right now. Okay. okay. And I actually like this story. So You're sure it's a Palestinian story? It literally just said that. Well, I, but yeah, but sometimes people refer to Israel as the lands of Palestine because it's in that area. So it's, it's from the Palestine. Okay. I'm yes. just, just making sure. Yes. King Solomon, the wisest of mankind the wisest, understood the language of the birds in the air, the beasts in the forest, the fowl in the barnyard, and the fish in the sea. Okay. Okay? Remember? That wasn't specifically in the Bible, but that's something that I referenced before in another story that he's renowned for being able to speak the language of the animals as part of his great wisdom. Dr. Doolittle or something. Right. Right. He's got to push me, pull you in his backyard. Sure. Do you know what that is? Uh, No, I don't. Oh, Oh my gosh, the push me pull you. It's um I think it's like a horse or something, but it's got a head on both ends. Because oh. it's a push me pull you, you okay. know? Like it can go both ways. Got it. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> Dr. Right. Doolittle, push me pull you. No? Yeah, no. Oh my god, that's the only thing I remember about him besides that he can speak to the animals. I don't think I ever watched the actual movies. I just know of Dr. Doolittle. I never watched so. the movies either. Oh. It's, okay. Do you know that it's based on a book series for yes, kids? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's where I'm referencing it. From. Got it. Okay. Okay. One day he sat at the entrance to his palace on the Temple Mount, delighting in the bright sky and clear daylight. Before him, two cooing birds caressed each other, twittering merrily. As the king looked up, he heard one bird say to his spouse, Who is that man seated here? And she answered, This is the king whose name and fame fill the world. Then the bird answered in mocking pride. And do they even call him mighty? How is his power sufficient for all these palaces and fortresses? Did I so desire I could overthrow them in a second by fluttering one wing? (laughs) What a dumb bird, right? Right, Do you believe him? No. His spouse encouraged him, saying, Do so and show your valor and power if you have the strength to carry out your words. And Solomon, listening to the conversation in astonishment, signed to the bird to approach and asked him the cause of his overweening pride. Yeah. Terrified, the trembling bird answered the august king. Let my lord and king grant me forgiveness out of his loving kindness and goodness of heart. I am not but a poor powerless bird who can do him no evil. All that I said was only to please my wife and raise myself in her esteem. That's a fair apology, I think. Like yeah. At least he was like coming clean and was like, I right. suck, bro. Right. And Solomon laughed to himself and sent the bird back to his spouse. She, meanwhile, stood on the roof and could not contain herself, waiting for her mate to return and tell her why the king had sent for him. When he came back, she asked excitedly, what did the king want? <laughs> and his chest swelling with pride, he answered, The king heard my words and entreated me not to bring destruction upon his court and not to carry out my purpose. (laughs) When Solomon heard this, he grew wroth with the brazen bird and changed them both into stone slabs. Wait, he was able to change people into stones or birds into stone slabs? Apparently. Wow. Yeah. 
to warn others to refrain from vain bragging and empty boasting, and to teach women folk not to incite their chosen ones in their vanity to undertake foolish and foolhardy deals. <laughs> Can you believe that shit? <laughs> That's hilarious. Right? I was like, okay. I then. just have to point out that there was nothing about Palestine in that shirt in that story. I didn't say there was. Oh, okay. I just said it was a Palestinian story. I don't okay. It said so. No, it said it was from a book called Land of Palestine. Oh. Which could mean Israel. Oh. And it doesn't well, have anything to do with Palestinians. Oh, well, I wanted to just I was trying support to the out. Palestinian people real bad. Yeah, so. I don't think that's what that was. Well, sorry. I'm just, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. My heart's in the right place. Yeah. My brain is just dumb. <laughs> All right, moving on. Page 378, The Orphan. Okay? Okay, yeah. This is real short. Got it. A rich man who was a miser was once asked to give a donation to buy matzos for the poor. He gave a trifling sum to the committee. Your son, who is a poor man, has given more generously than you, he was told ironically. How can you compare me to my son, he replied. He has a father who's a rich man. I have no father at all. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, right? Right, yep. Okay, the miser. Same page, 378. The ailing miser needed the aid of a specialist, yet the fees appalled him. $25 for a first visit and ten for subsequent visits. Yet it was life or death, and besides, he had an inspiration. Mm. As he entered the doctor's inner office, the miser exclaimed, Well, doctor, here I am again. So that he could get the repeat oh, instead yeah, yeah, yeah. of the first visit. Right. The doctor examined the patient with great thoroughness, then said, And as for the treatment, just um, continue the same as before. <laughs> <laughs> i see your lion raise you one <laughs> all right now we're entering sinners um you know the, uh listed off several right uh, little sections yep um this one has its own little intro okay so i'm gonna read part of it got it okay the sinner is dealt with almost gently in Jewish belief and in folklore this is due to the ages old cultivation among jews of a scorn for self-righteousness. The pious man says about an evildoer, even if he has been victimized by him, let God judge him. Or if in anger he should speak harshly of him, he hastens to add, may God not punish me for my words. Unless, of course, you're one of the people that you're supposed to stone to death in the streets. Right. I mean, I'm right. just saying that's a thing. Yeah. So, I'm having a problem reconciling this with what we know. <laughs> right. I think they mean like current Jews and not like the Israelites. Well, but even at that, I think there is like legitimately, like they're not meant to like actually harm people, but there's people that sell stones in the streets of Israel to like, you know, like they're like foam stones to like stone, to pretend stone people or whatever. Are you serious? Yeah. Like I've heard, I, I don't know where I heard that, but I've heard stories about Oh my they actually, God. like, so it's, it's a thing, you know, like stoning, let's they recognize it even. Let's pretend to stone people. That sounds right, real fun. Right, right, yeah. Absolutely not, sir. Yeah. Ooh. There is a layer of mellow humanism in Jewish thought, secular as well as religious, which shrinks from harsh strictures against the misconduct of others. Live and let live is its benign attitude. This springs no doubt from a practical realism, which starts out with the fundamental recognition that men are not angels and that everybody has his weaknesses and limitations. Yeah. It seems to apply to men and not women is what I'm getting, though. <laughs> In Jewish folk humor, the sinner gets a merry ribbing, but no more. Frequently, he is contrasted with scoffing hilarity to the overpious saint. And we will read some of that in the next couple things got it surprisingly enough he gets the better end of the treatment here hmm. the bad guy not the good guy right right and this not because he is considered an admirable character far from it he serves merely as a convenient pretext to shoot a barbed arrow at the holier than thou men who expect heavenly rewards for their virtue hmm interesting that's, right yeah yeah, I, I, that's uh, appropriate for today's day and age, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, 
As such, these jokes about sinners and saints have served as an excellent corrective in Jewish life, for they preach the doctrine of the golden mean and warn against fanaticism. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Wow. We can use some of those warnings mm-hmm. for sure. So I like this one, Saint and Sinner on page 380. Okay. A rich man who was a profligate, a souse, and a lecher died in a certain town. The entire community mourned his death and followed his hearse to his last resting place. What a wailing, what a lamentation was heard as his coffin was lowered into the grave. In the recollection of the oldest inhabitant, no rabbi or sage had ever departed this life amidst such general sorrow. Mm, For a profligate, a souse, and a lecher. He got that much um, tears and whatnot. Right, right, yeah. It chanced that on the following day, another rich man died in the town. He was just the opposite of the first in character and manner of living. He was ascetic and dined on practically nothing but dry bread and turnips. He had been pious all the days of his life and sat all the time in the house of study, poring over the Talmud. Nevertheless, no one except his own family mourned his death. His funeral passed almost unnoticed, and he was laid to rest in the presence of only a handful. Mm -hmm. A stranger, who happened to be visiting in the town at the time, was filled with wonder and asked, Explain to me the riddle of this town's strange behavior. It honors a profligate, yet ignores a saint. Right. Right? That's a fair question. To this, one of the townsmen replied, Know that the rich man who was buried yesterday, although he was a profligate and a drunkard, was the leading benefactor of the town. He was easygoing and merry and loved all the good things in life. Practically everybody in this town profited from him. He'd buy wine from one, chickens from another, geese from a third, and cheese from a fourth. And being kind-hearted, he'd pay well. That's why he is missed and we mourn after him. But what earthly use was that other one, the saint, to anybody? He (laughs) lived on bread and turnips, and no one ever made a dime on him. Believe me, no one will miss him. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought that was pretty great, right? Yeah. We all love the party dude. Right. All right, moving on to page 383, filial love. Do you know what filial means? No. Well, I'll just let you tell me in the end. Okay. 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 A rich man, having confidence in his son, gave him all his property in his lifetime. After a while, the son commenced to neglect his father, ill-treating him and sending him away to be among the beggars. Could you do that to your dad? Do send him to send your dad? Yeah. A way to be among beggars? Yeah. No. That's what I'm saying. There's a rich man and he sent his dad away he like gave all of his money and stuff to his son okay one day the old man clad in tatters met his grandson and asked him to beg his father to let him have a mantle to cover himself as it was so cold after much begging the father sent his son up to the loft and told him to fetch a certain mantle which was hanging on a hook while on the loft the boy took a knife and cut the mantle in half The father, wondering what the boy was doing all that time, went to find out. The son told him that he had been busy cutting the mantle in half and added that he would give his grandfather one half and keep the other half for when his own father grew old. (laughs) The man was greatly surprised at this reply and, recognizing the wickedness of his action, took his father back and treated him with all honor. Mm, Yeah. (laughs) We all get old someday. Right, right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe that is it. Oh, you wanted to know what filial meant. Yeah. It meant father and son relationship. Oh, okay. Yeah. You didn't get that? No. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just have that vocabulary. Yeah. So anyway, that is it for today. All right. Sounds good. Well, that was our Sacrilegious Book Club. Sacrilegious Book Club. For today. And uh, we will have our weekly wrap up here in just a little bit that will be put out. And then tomorrow we'll be back starting. Isaiah chapter one. All right. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Bye.
Hey wife, I guess that's the end? But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye. <laughs>